Hi there, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing really well today. So I've got a sleepy sidekick with me today, little Echo. As some of you know, I got Echo back in November, so I've had him a good few months now, and it's been the best time of my life. I love him so, so much, and I just can't imagine life without him. So I thought it would be a good video today to make, to share all the things you need to know about a ragdoll, and what you need to know, and what it's like to actually own a ragdoll. <laughs> so a little disclaimer here, this is my own personal opinion. I've only ever owned one ragdoll and he's laid right here with me. He's only five months old. So, you know, a lot of things can change over time as they grow and each cat is completely different too. And that's not to say that you should only buy ragdoll cats. There are so many cats out there that need rehoming and need foster parents and adoptive parents. So I just wanna share about my personal experience owning a ragdoll, my little Echo and what it's been like so far. I get a lot of questions about this, people asking me where to buy a ragdoll, where I personally got my little Echo from, and honestly it's personal, it's up to each person, we all live in completely different places, some of you in different parts of the world, so me letting you know where I got my ragdoll from isn't necessarily relevant because I would not recommend putting your little kitten on an aeroplane and letting them travel by themselves a long way, I just think it's, it's a lot for a little kitten. So I personally, I looked for Echo and I, I just did a lot of research before I found him and I found a really good Facebook group in the UK called, I think it's called Registered Ragdoll Kittens and Cats UK. So I highly recommend to join that group and in there there are all the registered breeders of ragdolls in the UK. You can just write in there a little intro about yourself and where you're from in the country and then people, breeders will get back to you and you'll be able to have a conversation with them too. So that's how I personally found Echo. When you get the prefix, which is the little name of the breeder, you need to be able to search that in Google to find that they are actually registered. There are a lot of people out there to scam you and you don't want to end up spending a lot of money and not ending up with a cat in the end because that is unfortunately what happens to a lot of people out there. Another thing I want to say is a good breeder won't let you put a deposit down until the kitten is at least, I want to say six weeks old, so once they've had their first vaccine. A lot can go wrong in those first weeks of a kitten's life. They might be born premature, they might be too small, they might end up with some sort of genetic disorder or disease which causes them a lot of pain. You know, anything can go wrong in those first weeks and until they've had that first vaccine, it's very all up in the air and every good breeder knows that. So do not give anybody your money until you've at least seen the kitten or you've had a video call with the kitten and the breeder and the mum in the same room because then you know it's true. You know that that person exists and you know that those kittens do actually exist because a lot of the time people can put on pictures of cats that they don't even own, ask people for a deposit, you send the deposit and you never hear from them again and I do not want that to happen to any of you. Another thing to know is that a good breeder won't let you have your kitten until they're at least 12 or 13 weeks old. It's at this age that they've had their second dose of their vaccine and they're fully immunized. Usually you are not allowed to have the kitten until a week after they've had their last vaccine just to make sure they're absolutely healthy and okay. I also recommend to not get a cat, any cat, pedigree or not, until they're at least this age because I've had kittens in the past that I've had at six weeks, eight weeks. They have a lot of problems, you know, a lot of uh, behavioural issues. So, you know, clawing furniture, biting too hard, not really understanding those social dynamics. I believe that if they stay with their mum and their other litter mates until they're at least 12 weeks old, they have a better understanding of what it is to be a cat and how much their play can hurt another person or another being. So I touched on this a little bit with what I said before, but there are a lot of genetic conditions that ragdolls especially can get. One of the main ones is, let me see if I can say this right, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. I think I said that right, who knows. <laughs> Basically, it's a thickening of the heart wall and it can cause a lot of problems as cats grow older and it can be fatal. Um, so a lot of good breeders will test for this and they will not breed from cats that have this genetic disorder, even if they don't present it themselves. That stops the line of kittens from getting this disease and it lessens the chance of them developing it as they grow older. So I just wanted to mention this is the first point. I know it's been a very serious first point, but it's very important to me. I get a lot of questions and a lot of people telling me that they've put deposits down for kittens that don't, you know, aren't even born yet. It's not the way to go. You need to buy from a good breeder. If you're giving them your money, your well-earned money, you need to make sure you're paying for what you are actually paying for. 
So wait until they're 12 weeks old until you bring them home. Make sure they're a registered breeder and that they have a prefix. Make sure that they are following the protocol. And also make sure that your kitten has been vaccinated and is fully fleed and wormed before you bring them home. I will stand by this until the day I die. I believe Echo is just not a cat. Like, I don't know what he is. It's like a different breed. <laughs> it's just like an alien cat. Like, it's just, it's not like any cat I've ever had in my life. He's so floppy, so docile, so loving, and just such a brilliant cat. A lot of you have said that it's like having a newborn baby, and honestly, it definitely is because he's just so loving and he loves cuddles and honestly when you see people holding their cats they are so floppy like they it just I've never known anything like it I've never been able to touch my cat's paws before in the way that Echo lets me he's just loving he loves kisses and I think he just understands us as a whole you know a lot more than any cat I've ever had before I've loved all the cats I've had in the past I've always had moggies before Echo and I've never experienced so much love and just so much understanding from a cat he's just amazing and I love him so much. It's true what they say about ragdolls, if you just pick him up he goes limp and in the morning if he wants cuddles he'll just come down and he's so heavy when he lays down next to you, he's absolutely adorable so I do think that is something that ragdolls are, you know every ragdoll is different, they all have different behaviours, some might not like being picked up and a lot of this I want to go back to the point I made before, it's down to the breeder and it's down to the way the breeder has brought them up. If a breeder has a load of cats from a litter and it keeps them in a cage confined and it never is socialised with its other litter mates or any people and you bring that kitten home it's not going to know what to do with itself so this is why it's important and it's not just about buying a rag doll you know it's about the breeder, it's about the socialisation. That's just as important as the genetics, if not more important. So them being brushed when they're little, being handled when they're little, it's all very important and I think it's a lot, you know, the breeder, <laughs> I have a lot to thank for the way that Echo is. And so doing your research, reading reviews, that is very, very important when it comes to buying a ragdoll. So as you probably have come to understand, they are long-haired cats and they do need grooming once two times a day. I haven't noticed very much hair coming from Echo. It's been more this last few weeks. So as he gets older and as he gets bigger, he's gonna have a lot more fluff going on. He's a very fluffy cat. And if we don't brush him every single day, he's prone to getting tangles and knots. We've not experienced any of these, but I know his breeder did have trouble with him when he was little. So keeping that in mind is really, really good to know because you just need to make sure you're brushing, especially around their mane, around their mouth, because he's likely to lick himself and he gets his tongue stuck on his mane as he licks it. So something else to keep in mind is they might need a, like a proper groomer in the future just to help them, keep them trimmed and fresh uh, as they are. And so yeah, around the leg area, under their armpits and around their neck definitely needs grooming every single day. Following on from this point, you will most likely, at some point in your ragdoll experience, experience Klingons. That's what we like to call them. <laughs> this is a bit TMI, so if you're a bit like fussy about hearing about poo and stuff, then just skip forward to the next point. But I want to put this in here because I haven't heard it of anywhere on YouTube when I've looked at videos like this in the past, and I just want to be honest out there because this is something that you're going to have to deal with. Ragdolls, if they are constipated, <laughs> can end up with Klingons which is a little bit of poo that sticks to their bum fur and they'll walk around the house and they'll scoot around on their bum trying to get it off. True fact. And also if you are stopping food around when you first bring them home or if they experience any gastro symptoms they can get diarrhea and that is not fun with a long haired cat. <laughs> because you will definitely need to bathe their bums in the sink or in the bath. Uh, so keep that in mind, you know, um, <laughs> it's very true, it's very humbling, it's a very humbling experience. Echo's been brilliant every time this has happened. It's not happened very often, but I just want to put out there that it has happened. Um, so just make sure you're keeping them calm and you give them a treat afterwards and, you know, it just becomes part of it. Most days he's absolutely fine, but if we are swapping food around or if he's not drank enough, then this can happen. So I found that keeping him on a raw food diet has really helped and we don't get this problem very often, but when we first brought him home, we did have a few issues. So keep that in mind. 
You can also go to the vet and you can ask for a hygiene cut. We've done this ourselves on Echo, just trimmed the hair around his bum. This is so much more information than Echo probably wants out there on the internet. But you can just snip that fur just to make it a little bit shorter and it helps to avoid this issue from starting in the first place. But just like every long haired cat, you know, if if you think about it, it's inevitable if they have issues down there, it's going to get stuck in the fur and it's very, very hard for them to clean it because their fur is so long. There's only so much they can do. <laughs> You literally will never be alone again. You'll never have a minute where your cat's not looking for you, meowing for you or following you all around. From the minute I wake up in the morning to the moment I go to bed, he is there. Next to me is my second hand man. They are so sociable and they just love being around people so much. He is like a fluffy shadow that you just can't help but love. And if I'm doing anything, he wants to be involved. I could be cooking, he wants to be up on the worktop. If I'm folding the bed, you know, the laundry on the bed, he wants to be there. If I'm putting washing inside the washing machine, he's there. If I'm putting litter in his tray, he's looking at what I'm doing and he wants to be involved. So it is like having a toddler sometimes because he just literally wants to be involved in every single thing that I'm doing, which I personally find adorable. I got Echo as an emotional support cat and that is definitely what he's been for me. He's always there and I think you can tell when I'm feeling a bit sad or a bit down. So I love that about him. But for some people, if you've got a busy life and you've got a lot going on, a ragdoll probably isn't for you because they do want to be there constantly. If you've had a hard day at work and you want to come back, kick your feet up and watch telly, your ragdoll is going to want to play. <laughs> it's going to want all of your attention and you're not going to be able to have any time to yourself. So keep that in mind. You know, there are times during the day where he's asleep and he's no bother at all. But when he is awake, he does want your constant, constant attention. They are very needy cats. demonstrated this in a few of my videos in the past but they are very vocal and Echo is getting more and more talkative by the day so if I'm making food for him that's especially the time that he's going to talk. Yeah, I didn't think you were this morning. Do you want some food? You do? Oh, best feed you then, eh? Oh dear me, you would think the world was ending Echo. <laughs> Come on. You know, he hears certain noises and he's just meowing. If he's having a mad hour and I'm downstairs and Dom's still in bed, he'll run upstairs and he'll start meowing loads to try and get Dom out of bed. If we're doing something he doesn't like, he'll meow. If I go to the toilet and close the door, he'll meow. <laughs> so they're not silent. I think this is something that is misunderstood about ragdolls. I think I've heard before that they are a really quiet breed, but no, no they're not because he's always making noise and he does this really cute thing where he sets off to run somewhere and he like makes a little noise, um, which is adorable. So yeah, they're very vocal, very talkative and they will definitely keep you company. So ragdolls are big cats, you know, Echo is only five months old and he's already, he's already very long, I don't know if you can see, he basically takes up an entire pillow of this sofa already and that means that they eat a lot so keep that in mind too, you know, if you're on a really tight budget and you want to bring a ragdoll into your life, they're going to cost you quite a bit of money to feed and that also means that they poop a lot too, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Ragdolls can be up to, I think it's 6 kilograms for a female and up to 9 kilograms for a male, which is pretty heavy. So if you don't work in kilograms, I'll just give you the difference between a ragdoll and a domestic house cat. So a domestic house cat can weigh up to 4.5 kilograms and obviously the heaviest a ragdoll should get is about 9 kilograms. That is a big difference in weight and they are definitely babies and so they want to be carried around. So if you struggle with holding heavy things, then keep that in mind too because they love being held. They are very heavy, very large cats, and with this comes the you know different problems. So, um, cat scratching posts from normal pet stores probably won't cut it for a ragdoll. They need really heavy industrial, <laughs> big, big, big cat scratching posts to be able to scratch it without it falling over. So we've got a few different uh, cat scratching posts for Echo, but he's quickly outgrown those, and we're definitely in need of a cat tree for him that is much bigger and is going to be sturdy and strong enough to hold him as he gets into being a very big boy. <laughs> So there are actually six different colour patterns that ragdolls can be. I'm going to test my memory here and see if I can remember them all. So there's blue, which is what Echo is. There's seal, there's chocolate, there's flame, there's cream. 
and lilac. <laughs> so that's the six different colour patterns. I'll leave it to you guys to research what the different colours mean, um, but they are all really beautiful and they are the proper colours of ragdolls. With that there are also colour patterns, so there's colours and there are also colour patterns and so that's where they get their names. So for example Echo is a blue by colour Lynx, that's what Echo is down as, so that's how confusing it can get. So the different colour patterns are colour points, so this is colour on all points, nose, tail, ears and face. Mitted, which is the same colouring as a colour point but with white paws and a white abdomen. Bicolour, which is white legs and an inverted V on the face. There are also variants of these colours, so Lynx is one that Echo is, which in the UK is called Tabby, which is basically Tabby markings, so they can end up with like a little M shape on their forehead and it's like lines that go through, it's very beautiful. And there is also Torty or Tortoise Shell, which is like a distinctive, different coloured markings all over the body, it can be solid or it can be like little blotches of colour all over. Something to keep in mind is that they are all born white um, and then by 10 weeks old they start to show some colour in and it can take 3-4 to four years for them to fully develop into their colours. In all honesty it's really hard to wait when you decide that you want to jump into something as massive as buying a cat or getting a rag doll. It's very exciting, you know, a lot of you guys have been saying that you're watching my videos because you're getting your own kitten. It takes a lot of time to find a kitten and at different times of year it can be very hard so this time of year breeders start to settle down and they're just starting to wind up so as spring approaches there will be lots of litters available but if you're looking for a rag doll right now the chances are it's going to be very hard and you're probably just going to have to wait it out and join a lot of waiting lists but keeping communication open with breeders, talking to them, asking them for updates and things like that, that's definitely helpful and it can really help you to build a bond with your breeder as well. Just don't rush it, you know, don't just jump into the first thing you can do, don't get impatient and go on pets for homes and buy a £200 rag doll because chances are they're not going to be healthy and they're not going to have been looked after properly. Please don't do that, <laughs> just be patient, when it's meant to be it will be and you will end up with the most beautiful, gorgeous, loving cat that you could ask for. One thing's for sure, they are a very sociable breed, they are so loving, so lovely and they just love being around people so much. I think it's important to state that if you are going to be out of the house a lot, so if you work six to eight hours a day, don't just buy one rag doll, make sure you're buying two and get them from the same litter if you can or stagger the ages. I think that they're very sociable and very happy-go-lucky breed and so I feel like it could be easier to bring in another cat than it could be with other breeds but keep it in mind you know if you're going to be out of the house a lot they really do need affection and attention and they could develop a lot of behavioural issues if you're not in the house all the time so I work from home I'm basically at home 24-7 and Echo is like my little sidekick buddy and he's always around me uh, he loves the social attention but we are thinking of getting him a little friend because I think it's really important for them to have another creature that's the same as them to understand them and to play with because it can be exhausting as an owner you know always playing with them and giving them all of your energy and if you're busy in the day you know just because I'm at home doesn't mean that I've got 100% of the time you know available to play with Echo when he needs me and so I think just having that in mind you know if you are just getting one but having the means to get another one in the future that's really good to know um, and something that I I'd thought about but I thought you know I'd be at home all the time it would be fine but I think I would probably recommend to get two just because then they're gonna have each other to talk to and play with and just be with each other and have a really fun time but they are lovely and if you have only got one it can be absolutely fine too you just got to make sure you keep them as your first priority everything else comes second in my opinion I hope you enjoyed this video if you did you'll definitely enjoy all of the videos I've got of Echo on my channel there are quite a few now I've done lots of vlogs and videos of him and they're absolutely adorable and will definitely melt your heart so if you're in the mood for that then I will leave the playlist down below so you can watch that after this video I appreciate you all so so much thank you for watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure you give me a big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you all in my next video mm -hmm.